Let's move on to Steinhoff, nice. which is an integrated retailer that manufactures, sources, and retails furniture and household goods in Europe, Africa, and Australasia. It is second only to IKEA in that territory. Correct, and we know <laughs> it's been doing further bolt-on acquisitions. So it's got Pepcor, which is huge. <laughs> But it is trying to buy its way into and around Europe and the United States of America with this recent mattress deal. Remember, it's now fully listed in Frankfurt, reporting in euros. It's had one set of financial results, but quite hard to read, though. And so we're seeing it sort of um, drift around a little bit later. Market cap, 319 billion US dollars. Mm. Price to earnings billion ratio. Right. <laughs> yes, you couldn't say headquarters a moment ago. So give we'll me give that. that. Let me try it again. 319 billion rand. Price to earnings ratio of 16.1 and a dividend yield here of just over 2%. Mm. Let's get your thoughts, especially with regards to the recent transaction. So Steinhoff is a bit of an acquisition machine. That's really how this business has formed itself and grown and continues to grow. Recently, three acquisitions, you mentioned two of them. Uh, Poundland is one, uh, the mattress business in the US, and then t more recently, Techie Town in South Africa. <laughs> yeah, I forgot and, about that one. And, the, and the, the, that's undisclosed, but the numbers uh, that I've heard talked about are two and a half to three billion rand for Good that gracious. business. And that's a big concern that I have. I think they have diluted their, their earnings by overpaying for acquisitions. Um, and there is that concern. Poundland, not a particularly good business in the UK, apparently was on the block for a long time. And each time they've had to pay up for these businesses because it gets quite competitive. Would, mm. would you compare Eurster to Joffe, given the ability to bolt on acquisitions? So... Yes, I would. The only differentiating factor is I, I think Bidvest are a little bit better as disciplined in terms of looking at return on assets and saying that's what we'll couch our purchase price on. And of course, a different era. Acquisitions are much more competitive now. For a long time of Bidvest, it wasn't that, uh, uh, it wasn't that aggressive and you could pay a little bit less. So is it a, will that acquisition-led growth replicate itself as a strategy i'm not so sure steinhoff and our relationship we've been a keen investor in them let's look at the share chart and you'll we've see made it's done money. well we've had it yeah. for like five years in our hot stocks portfolios and lately it's kind of drifted around a little but remember they've done the listing and those financials then become very hard to compare one on the other because they reversed the business changed the share code used a shell in the in, you know, European markets in order to convert, started reporting in a different currency. It's so hard to actually work out what's going on. Anything else to add before we call it? The bulk of the earnings are in Europe, and Europe is a very low growth sector. So uh, given that and, and the concern about overpaying for acquisitions, I'm, I'm skeptical on this one. So you're not hot not on Steinhoff? Not hot or hot? I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Especially because we have it in the portfolio. Yeah, wait, give me a moment. All the rest of the companies coming after this are not so hot. So so you, and of course, we want to speak about Steinhoff. We Let's see if we can one. convince Lars. No, 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 I don't mind about convincing Lars. <laughs> Remember, Marcus Yosa is a very talented business operator mm -hmm. and he's also exceptionally hardworking and he's got good lieutenants around him running these various businesses. But what he really does is he goes around finding ways of improving the yeah. operational metrics yeah. of businesses they buy. So all these thousands of branches that they just acquired now in the US, you can be sure he's going to be knocking on their doors as well. And I really think that he is an expert at taking rather rundown, rather underappreciated businesses like this in a sector that isn't all that glamorous and finding ways of making them sweat their assets, well, hence buy my better, analogy with Brian Joffe. et cetera, et cetera. So I think if anything, he is one of the most talented South African businessmen in the last 50 years. And I do actually think that they're not done yet. Steinhoff, I think, is probably going to make a play for uh, ShopRite. What about that? Do you, do you reckon he would make a play for ShopRite? Common shareholder, remember? Christo yeah. Visa is involved yeah. with both. Uh, I'm skeptical. They don't really fit. Um, parts of ShopRite do, but the broad part of ShopRite doesn't. But that, that is speculation that's out there. Mm. And what you find with these businesses, there is definitely value in size because they become more and more interesting to these big offshore funds. So that has been a strategy to bulk the business, very much so. Um, there are other interesting acquisitions. There's Edcon, of course, in South Africa, yes. which may be, be on, on the flip side. Yeah. That. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. I, I don't think they're done. 
of course, as it gets bigger, it does get a little bit harder to manage. But of course, Paul's yeah. endorsement of Steinhoff is spoken like a person who is steeped yeah. in the stock. Mm. And I think a lot of South African investors are because it's been a very successful investment story. It fulfilled its goal of being you uh, being European listed, which I think is also a nice plus because it puts it in the DAX 30. It's one of the largest consumer companies on that market. So there's access to capital. So they can really fund these deals where they go yeah. and buy things uh, relatively easily and then go to work on them. So Have you, are you, hot on me. Are you finished? Hot for me, yes. Hot on you, yes. <laughs> hot or not? Uh, not. Not hot. You couldn't convince Lance. <laughs>